Welcome back to Dowtwang. I'm Dave. We've got a piece in E here. Um, we'll go over the chords in a second and I'll include uh, this simple backing track down below. Um, it's Here's another thing we can do is that because some of y'all are putting these in devices and maybe it's helpful. It's 97 beats per minute. Okay. Um, and it's just a drum loop and a, a kind of a skanky guitar rhythm. So it's in E. And if you want to jot this down, if you like to think in kind of, you know, numerical terms of a key, it's one, five, four, one, then six, five, four. Okay. And we're in E. So that's E, B, A, E. I just used a different form of E for that second instance, okay? And then... That's the sixth chord, C sharp minor, or C sharp minor seven, then B, A, okay? So instead of talking over myself playing and competing for the mic and right, it's however you look at it. You could jot the chords down. You could just play it with the loop uh, or off to the side until you feel like you've got it comfortably. Or you could write it out in um, numerical form of the key and you could write the letter names under those numerals, right? And that's then it's how you self teach, right? It's whatever you're doing to really internalize all of this stuff, right? Um, and it helps you memorize. When you write something down, you're, you're consuming it in, on a different channel than just if it just says something on a screen all the time, right? You need to be doing that all the time, writing it down, right? Um, even if you, memor if, you, if you memorize things well, Go ahead and write it down. Let me know if you don't see an immediate change. It might take a week or two, but like in your just kind of retention of everything, right? Yeah, it's great if you can run back to whatever site and get the chords and the tab and the... But, you know, some things... Um, here in just a second, I'll show you a good example. The source material that we're going to use to improvise over this is you know the major scale and a major pentatonic and once you get those chords that routine kind of memorized and rehearsed a little bit you're kind of done with that part then we switch over to what this is really going to be about really have some fun with this today which is how to create um, good feeling and sounding lines by embellishing and building on very simple lines, sometimes even sequentially right out of the scale. In that intro, I cleaned up my sound a little bit too, I noticed in that intro. I like to play with a dirtier sound when I'm soloing, but then when I sometimes when I switch to the lesson portion, it's better to have a, a more or less clean sound for you all to really hear it. So I went... Uh, sorry, I countered it. I went... I see what I did. In that intro, I let the first two chords share the same note. E, B, A, E, E, up, C sharp minor, B, A. That's me saying the chords over those notes, okay? So that line is literally right down the scale. It doesn't start right on the root E. But it starts. Right, if you want to resolve it, so warm up on your E major scale. Now, if I put this on for just a second, 
we'll get right into the fun part. And I'll play that line, and then I'll start to make little embellishments, and I'll stop and talk about how uh, you can do that as well. Now, get this turned off. So we went through those chords and those triad shapes and things, and the, at, at the end here in a few couple of minutes, this isn't gonna be a real long one because this one's important for you to just get right in there and kind of do what you just saw um, and heard. Um, but at the end, we, I will talk briefly about how, you know, when you move those triads and cage shapes around for those simple chords, keep them simple, just use triads. You know, there's not a lot of fancy sevens and stuff in there, um, the way that I played it on the backing track. Then you want to be able to kind of, uh, you know, play using that scale in those different areas where those different chord triad shapes exist all over the neck. You hear this all the time on YouTube, right? But the thing is, that's not, that's next step. For a lot of folks, what makes sense is to get to hang out and just really, you know, work this one path, right? And if you, you know, you may start to notice right away, well, well, the, I can sort of see where the chords are around there, but you're not really worrying about like playing a bunch of chord tones for every chord, right? Like a full triad and stuff. And here's what I mean for that E, the first one. That's the fifth of E. It is a chord tone of the E. It's also, like we mentioned a few minutes ago, the chord tone, the root of the next chord. So I just leave it there, right? Um, you could strike it again or not. Um, then when it goes to the A, that's the root of A. So if our melodies. The first three notes is fifth of the E, root of the B, root of the A. Then when it goes to E again, the next, the second instance of the E, the fourth chord in the sequence, it's the that um, note is uh, G sharp. It's the major third of the E, okay? So don't worry, you're doing the right stuff. <laughs> you're doing the hip stuff, right? It's just not, you're just not trying to do it all at once and getting really strung out, right? And your music will sound more grounded. It will sound cool, right? It, 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 it won't, not heady right? It'll just be smoother and you can relax your body. And so you want to monitor that as you go. If you feel yourself getting all jacked up and stuff, take a breath, stop, take your hand off the neck, put it back, pick a chord tone or some sequence that your ear has already sort of helped you sort out and just hang out there. Trust me, this will pay off big time. So now let's just go back and kind of approach this again and see what happens. Kind of caught it right at the top of it there. Sounds a lot different, okay? 
hopefully in a good way, <laughs> right? Your style's going to come out, you know, whatever it is. But so for me, that when I'm patient and I stay on that path, I start to do a little bit of, you know, maybe hitting some of the, the striking some of the notes twice. So, right, it went from... Okay, now these are the elements that uh, we're talking about. And remind yourself of these, jot them down, put it on a post-it, stick it right there on your screen, right where you practice, on your music stand. Re repetition, direction change. And then slide into that third and, and s slide into different things. But when it's a third, a major third, specifically, slide in almost all. for now just make just put it on your list of reminders just just do it on everything and and then sort it out later because you're going to see that, how that changes your your sound stylistically immediately okay so you see the transformation The direction change, the staccato, the picking, the dancing of the timing, and then the slide to the to nail that major third on that E. Okay, so now you know, go back and review your progression or whatever, go one step at a time. You can go back and back up into these sections that we're doing right now and and you'll see how they line up on there, especially if you got it written down on a piece of paper by now, right in front of you. So when I go, see when I went to that, that uh, C sharp minor, sorry, I'm using that note and there it's the fifth of the, it, 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 it was earlier, it was the major third of the E, now it's the, it's the fifth of the C sharp uh, minor seven. So I slid it into, again, just to keep, just to stay in step with that feeling of the embellishment that I'd already invested and I'd already started. Now I'm just going to go up. Kind of hard for me sometimes to remember exactly uh, what I did before, but let me go back. Right, something like that. So when If you slide, that's a major third of the A at the end. Okay, and I may have come down one to... You're going to see that by using this simple system, this, these sequences, that those little triad shapes live in there. Now there, I followed more of a kind of like chord for chord, right? I got, I got into the triad thing for a second. I like that on a piece like this, but like I said, it's, and you see how I started this kind of stumble around a little bit with it? It's because if I just try to play what we call 
uh, the chords, you know, over the chords or through the chord. And I don't have a melody or a, a motif or something that's relaxed, that's already established. In my case, and perhaps many others, what happens is we immediately get into this head game where it looks like we're running around trying to play triads. And, and, and it comes off like that. It comes off like, oh, just, you know, it, it gets too uh, uh, deliberate. Now, at a certain level for all of us, when we get really warmed up and we really know a piece, we can take it to that level. But don't try to start like that on a piece. Start with... See how, and I don't want to go too far all at once, but I'm trying to keep it real even for you, right? Not put in a lot of real fast, you know, triplet runs and stuff. But you get that feeling right away where it's kind of, it's not all the way where you want it to be like that, but it's getting there. It's starting to get that, that sliding in and the, you start to pay more. Every note starts to matter more, right? It doesn't sound like you're just blazing through the stuff, okay? So, um... I'm going to leave it there. Give me some, some feedback on that. This is, I'm not feeding you a lot of exact licks today, right? And here's your game plan. Get that progression going. Um, warm up on the E major scale and the E major pentatonic. And then you can start with that line that, that I started with if you want to. Just walk... But expand it. See, that time it went down a little bit further, and I just kind of let it go down into another octave. Don't go back and just say, oh, what note did he play next? And you can do a little bit of that, but trust your ear. Follow it. Put the backing track on. You don't have to put play a lot of um, uh, uh, real fast notes, right? Even though the tempo's kind of higher, you can... Even without the chords, you want to practice both ways because then you start to, you go, you, you, you work a little bit with the track, then you take it away. Your ear starts to grab that progression and the, the song without having the track, right? It'll happen if you keep it slow, keep it simple. And once you're warmed up on this E major scale in the pentatonic and the chords, let your mind drift away from that don't keep looking at it and thinking about it right let it go into sort of like all right let me hold this note and what what's the next note that i can experiment with it's just going to sound like it's moving in the right direction one note at a time it'll work out we're going to do some some more stuff like this we've had some requests for like some more advanced topics like, you know, um, substitutions of chords and secondary dominance and where to use a diminished chord and so forth like that. And we're topics like that. We're going to get into some of that. Um, a lot of what we do on the twang is fundamental in the sense that not because it's like low, lower level, it's like getting in and exploring, making sure that you have a really solid foundation of your own sense of melody and creativity so that when we, when you do those things and other things that you see on YouTube, you're really bringing your own game to it. You're not just trying to rotely copy all this stuff because it, it'll overwhelm you, right? So we'll get there, right? 
this kind of stuff's really important and I hope it, it feels good and you have fun working on it. Let me know. I'll talk to you next time.